is up everybody and welcome to the introduction to our Madden 24 online franchise. As you can tell, we are taking over the Los Angeles Rams. Now I know what you're thinking, right? We usually take the toughest rebuilds on this channel. Why would the Rams be a tough rebuild? They just won the Super Bowl two years ago. They have Aaron Donald and they have Cooper Cup, two of the better X Factor players to have on your roster. Well, yeah, they're pretty good to have in the first year, but after that, that's where you run into issues. Cooper Cup and Aaron Donald are approaching the wrong side of 30, and beyond that, this is a team depleted of talent, depleted of assets. We don't have a lot of cap space to work with to start off. We definitely don't have a lot of draft capital since the Rams went so win now. You can tell this team is not too talented when you watch them in real life, even though the Rams are doing all right, but more so in Madden. This team is not high overalls. They're slow, and they don't have many what I like to call blue chip players. Now, at about the four-minute mark, you guys are going to see me do a full roster breakdown like we've done the past couple of years, going over the entire roster, figuring out, you know, guys we could build upon, guys that are trade pieces, all of that. You know, who we could use for year one, who we could use down the road. We're going to do all that good stuff, so don't worry about that. So, now that we got that out the way, I guess I can spend the next three minutes talking about where have I been. Because uh, it's been a couple months. So, one of the issues that I've had is I've got a new computer and I have been trying to record these videos with Streamlabs. And usually I used to use the Elgato software and that worked all fine. But with the Streamlabs stuff, I have not figured out how to record these videos in better quality. I mean, ho I hope this is good enough. If this is good enough, I, I hope it is. Because... Uh, everything that I've recorded so far is in this kind of quality, so hopefully it's passable. But, you know, I feel like there is better HD quality to get out there. And I, I don't know, I, I can't use that Elgato software that I used before with this new computer. It's just not compatible. Shout out to Max. Yeah, Max have their uh, upside and they definitely have their downsides. But, uh, yeah, I, I still cannot figure it out. So, I don't know, maybe anybody can help me with that. But that's been one of the reasons. But I, I still have been recording these anyways, even... At this quality and the other thing is i i kind of just needed that break which uh you know uh i think you guys have gotten used to that by now sometimes i end up taking these long breaks but i always come back all right i always come back to you guys and just know that i will never leave you guys i will always come back at some point so the not so fun part of us falling behind is over now we have to do the fun part which we've done a couple of times now which is catching up on uploads because uh we are pretty deep into uh you know this franchise now the recording that you guys are going to hear at the four minute mark that was recorded at the beginning of october all right we are at december so what we have to do is catch up therefore my plan is the month of december is going to be the month of rams football every day that i'm not uploading something else which might just about be every day expect the rams upload all right, expect this to speed run through the first year of this Rams online franchise. Is it December 1st? My plan is to get to week 18 by December 19th because we're going to upload, you know, our week one game against the Seattle Seahawks on December 2nd and, uh, you know, try to keep a daily push from there to try to catch up. All right. So, um, you know, hop aboard, get used to Rams football. It's going to be about that. By the way, what you guys are seeing, if you couldn't tell, this is some online head-to-head uh, -head stuff. I just figured I'd give you guys a little taste of the roster before we hopped into our week one game. So uh, we definitely got a taste, and we could tell that, I mean, we can make it work with this Rams team against this guy. I don't know if we'll make it work with our online franchise, but I'm going to peace out for now. I'm going to pass it over to Pass Cookie Boy from two months ago so he can break down the roster. And until then, I'll catch you guys next time. Yo, what's up, guys? Now that you guys got... A little sneak preview of what our Rams have to offer. Let's break down this Los Angeles Rams team, this franchise, what we're expecting from the Rams, not only in year one, but more importantly, in years two, three, four, and five, because usually this Premier Madden League is a five-year online CFM. The first important note to make is that the starting point for this franchise is week one in the regular season from real life. These are the base rosters that we started off with. And uh, we end up making a custom coach. But I'm not going to waste any time with that. We're just going to roll with Sean McVay for this little preview. And the reason why I'm not showing the actual franchise is because the actual franchise is past week one. So we don't want to show any spoilers. So two big notes 
for the fact that the franchise starts on week one. Number one, Cooper Cup is not on the IR. Cooper Cup did not go on the IR until after this week one roster update was released by EA. This was released, I believe, before the season opener of... Uh, you know, the Rams playing on Sunday. I think they put Cooper Cup on the IR like Saturday or something like that. So as you guys see here, we only have one guy on our IR. Mathis, not really too worried about that. So we have Cooper Cup for the first four weeks of the season, unlike the real Los Angeles Rams. That's the good wide receiver news. The bad wide receiver news is that Puka Nakua is a 67 overall. And I think this is actually a fair uh, starting point for us, is to talk about what we're going to do with Puka Nakua. Because... In real life, this guy is an absolute stud. And I, I would feel kind of wrong to not use Puka Nakua in our CFM. But here is the problem. Puka Nakua has 87 speed with the week one rosters. In the actual Madden, I believe he has 90 speed right now. His short route running is up to 82. He's like already a 75 overall. And, you know, he might even be star dead for all we know. He should be, at least for EA. But... In Madden, he is uh, pretty trash to start off the year. They slept on Puka just like most of us did, and um, his stats are very, very raw. It's going to be very hard to make Puka Nakua a thing, but especially for year one of this franchise, I am going to, I'm willing to make Puka Nakua a thing because we really don't have many other options at wide receiver. We have Van Jefferson, who is an upcoming free agent. We'll talk about our upcoming free agents uh, because there's a lot of them on this team. But Van Jefferson is just not a part of our plan, so let's just call it what it is. I don't care about Van Jefferson. He's not going to start. We're going to start Puka Nakua over Van Jefferson, and we're actually going to start Tutu Atwell at the wide receiver three spot behind Puka and, obviously, Cooper Cup. Uh, Tutu Atwell having 93 speed. We need some speed on the field, right? He's going to be our fastest wide receiver, our fastest skill position player, and, obviously, Cooper Cup is a beast. The problem is Cooper Cup, just like Aaron Donald, Approaching the wrong side of 30 years old. And in a five-year CFM, we just can't expect Cooper Cup to survive all five years. How long is he going to play? I don't know. How long is he going to play at an elite level? Another question. We have more questions than answers uh, you know, down the road. But we know immediately that Cooper Cup is going to be an animal. An absolute animal. He is unguardable with his route running, with his abilities. He's got slot um these this last two are kind of trash, but Sautomatic and Red Zone Threat are going to be pretty valuable to us. And just in general, his route running. For all the years that we've done these franchises, I think this is year five now of us doing uh, Premier Madden League franchise. We've never had a receiver to start off with close to as good as Cooper Cup. The closest thing we had was Kenny Galladay. And honestly, he was more of a raw physical receiver. So um, expect a lot of Cooper Cup. We're going to try to make Puka Nakua a thing. 2 2 at well. You know, we'll see how the deep passing game goes. The next position we got to talk about quarterback we have Matt Stafford and Stenson Bennett as our two quarterbacks on the roster and my plan is going to be that we're going to start Matt Stafford in year one because honestly Stenson Bennett is way too trash Stafford is not that good in the game but he's a pretty solid pocket passer he's got 92 throw powers accuracies are okay 85 play action can help us as well but you know, it's not really a quarterback you want to start in year one of a franchise. You would want to start the rookie, ideally. The problem is, Stenson Bennett is so bad. He's a 62 overall. He's 25 years old as a rookie because he played nine years of college. And he has 84 throw power. He has an absolute noodle arm. Even if we played Stenson Bennett the entire season, he maybe goes up a couple of overalls. And it's still absolute dog water, and we can draft somebody in the seventh round of the draft that's better than Stenson Bennett. There is no reason for us to waste our time. Uh, no offense to Stenson Bennett, but, like, he's 5'11", 190. Like, there's every reason possible to not use that guy. Now let's talk about the running back position, where we have two players to look at. One of them being Cam Akers, who is, like Van Jefferson, an upcoming free agent. Cam Akers... Traded in real life to the Minnesota Vikings, by the way, but since we're using the week one roster's starting point, Cam Akers didn't get traded until I believe uh, in the middle of week two or three or in the middle of three and four to the Minnesota Vikings. But for us, we have Cam Akers on our team. Um, he's okay. 94 acceleration is, is going to be pretty solid. 90 carrying, pretty reliable. Zach Evans is the backup. He's a rookie. And I think we're just going to play this running back situation with a little hot hand approach. 
and see who's got the hot hand between the two running backs and whoever it is every game, we're going to let it rock. Because Zach Evans, he's a 67 overall, he's 90 speed, he's okay, but I'm not really too crazy about him. I would be okay with just um, punting Zach Evans and drafting a running back down the road. Um, running back, is it that valuable right now? No, it's not. We have more pressing needs on this team completely. Um, but I don't think Cam Akers, I don't think neither of these running backs are our guy. So that's why I'm not really too invested in the position. It's just whoever brings us the most success. Offensive line, we have no boom. He's going to be a starter. We have Steven Avila. Uh, Steve Avila, sorry. He's a rookie out of TCU. He is actually star dev, and uh, he's actually the best building block we have on this offensive line. So uh, he's only a 71 overall, but he's going to be a good young prospect. Um, last year with the Giants franchise, I used the term blue chip player, and S Steve Avila, he might be the only blue chip player on this entire offense. Not even Cooper Cup, because like I said, I, there's no way Cooper Cup survives all five years, especially at an elite level. The other good offense alignment that we have that we can keep perhaps for all five years of the CFM is Kevin Dotson. Shout out to the Rams for making this trade right before the start of week one. So this trade got done in the game before the roster update released. Uh, there was a little bit of draft swapping, uh, position swapping, uh, minimal draft uh capital given up to get Kevin Dotson from the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's a 76 overall. He's not good, but you know... Over a couple of seasons, we can get him to about an 80 overall. He's only going to be 30 years old uh, by the time we get to year five at a CFM. So he is an upcoming free agent as well. And we're probably going to re-sign Kevin Dotson and just keep him for all five years. Just get our guards intact because the rest of our offensive line has question marks. The center position, uh, Brian Allen, no, no, no. Uh, Nothing to note for him at all. Rob Havenstein is our right tackle. He is our highest rated overall offensive lineman easily. He has two years left on his contract. He's 31 years old. Uh, we're going to let him play out those two years. And then after that, you know, we might sign him to another one-year deal depending on the state of our offensive line. But Havenstein should hopefully uh, give us some support at that right tackle position. The pass rush is not that crazy this year. So hopefully Havenstein can hold his own. Tyler Higby, 30 years old. He is an upcoming free agent. And I have no plans on re-signing Tyler Higby, so, um, yeah. Um, he's going to be our starting tight end this year because the other options are just lackluster, to say the least. Uh, you can't even see the fourth string tight end is Davis Allen, a rookie that the Rams drafted, but uh, he's only 70-something speed, so it's really no word to us. The Rams have a lot of rookies on their roster. The problem is they're all normal dev and or trash. Um, here's Bryson Hopkins. He's the fastest tight end on the roster, 84 speed. I would rather actually use Tyler Higby for his route running at that point since we're not really getting too much from the speed category from any of those tight ends. So we're going to start Tyler Higby for the year. Now let's go to the defensive side of the roster. Aaron Donald. We're going to play Aaron Donald at the defensive tackle position. I feel comfortable using him there with his inside stuff ability. Um, if you need to see Aaron Donald's ratings, they're pretty good, as you would expect from one of the all-time greats of the game. But you see his age. He's 32 years old. How long can we keep Aaron Donald around? I don't know, but if you check out his abilities, he's got under pressure. That's fantastic. Inside stuff and no outsiders. And even if regression hits Aaron Donald, you know, hopefully he can keep his abilities and may mainly keep that inside stuff and under pressure. As long as he has that, he's pretty valuable to us. But what could also be valuable for our team is potentially trading Aaron Donald and or Cooper Cup, especially if we're not winning early on in the year. We don't have any other trade. Look at how trash this roster is. We have no trade assets. Aaron Donald and Cooper Cup are our trade assets. So if we start the year off slow, we're definitely going to be sellers at the deadline. And we would, I think we would have to trade one or two or maybe even both of these guys. If we're winning by the time the trade deadline comes and we have a good record, then... You know, maybe we just wait, and if somebody offers us a King's Ransom, we could trade one of them. If not, we keep them. That's fine. That's totally fine for us to keep Aaron Donald and Cooper Cup. Even if they don't survive all five years, that's okay. We're going to get a lot out of them while we have them. And as far as trading them, it doesn't make sense for us to trade them unless we get surefire value, whether it's from uh, draft picks or players, both most likely. And if we don't get any offers like that, I'm not just going to take the best offer available. We're going to take an offer that matches the level of Cooper Cup or Aaron Donald, or we're going to keep them. We're going to be totally fine keeping those guys for as long as they survive. 
Aaron Donald's contract is only for the first two years of the CFM, and then after that, he falls off a little bit. So um, we'll probably have to make a decision in year two if we keep Aaron Donald to once again either trade him or resign him. But neither option is a bad option, right? <laughs> like, we trade him, we get pretty good value. So as far as our cornerback position, we have a Akilah Witherspoon. He's pretty slow. I'd rather sign somebody from free agency to start over him. Uh, we have Kobe Durant. He's 93 speed. He's definitely going to start. His auto ratings are pretty bad. And then we have, uh, then we have Hodges Tomlinson. Let me click on him again, man. It's like Travius T Hodges Tomlinson, right? Yeah, Travis Todd Hamilton also out of TCU. Uh, Rams like their uh, TCU prospects. This guy has 49 press, 39 tackling, 35 block shit. He's going to be hor 49 strength. He's going to be horrific guarding the run, but we don't really have many other options. We might as well play him in his rookie year. But his physicals are not that bad besides the elephant in the room, which is his height. But 92 speed, pretty good change of direction. Uh, you actually can't see it, but it's like 95 change of direction. He has 98 acceleration because of the coaching tree, I think, is giving him plus two. So, um, yeah, we're, we're going to start him. We're going to start Kobe Durant. But this secondary is god-awful. Like, I... I can definitely see a world where nobody from this secondary survives after the first two seasons, right? I, I, there's nobody I'm even willing to call. I wouldn't even put a blue chip on these guys. Like, I wouldn't put any chip on them. I wouldn't even put a chip on their shoulder, let alone call them a blue chip prospect. Um, as far as safety goes, our plan would be to start Jason Taylor the second. I don't know if he's actually the son of uh, the former Dolphin great Jason Taylor, but uh, he could be. I, I haven't... Uh, bothered to look it up, but he's only a 65 overall, and he's still going to start for us. That's how bad this secondary is. Everybody is so slow and so trash. They got this dude, Kendrick, that's 85 speed. He won't sniff the field. We're probably going to cut him. We have John Johnson, but we're actually going to use John Johnson as sub linebacker. So, even though he's only 85 speed, um, this CFM that we're in has, like, very specific rules on who you can use as a sub-linebacker from as far as the safety goes. And John Johnson is legitimately one of the only, like, 20 safeties in the entire league that can play sub-linebacker. So, because of that, he actually holds some value for us. Otherwise, this 85 speed would not see the field. But with that sub-linebacker role, um, 85 hit power, 83 zone... We'll see if he can make some plays for us on the field. And then we have Jordan Fuller at safety. This is another upcoming free agent. And uh, 87 speed. Uh, yeah, if we can trade him, that would be cool. But the problem is these guys are so bad. Like Higby, Jordan Fuller. It's like, oh, yeah, maybe Van Jefferson. You could trade them maybe. But these guys are so bad. No, like the... In a 32-man CFM, like, no one is trying to trade for these guys, all right? So, we can't even think about putting these guys on the trade box. 76 overall, slow as dirt players. Shout out to the Rams. But that's why this rebuild is going to be difficult. That's why it's going to be fun. And you guys know we love the tough rebuilds. Uh, as far as linebackers go, we are... Um, Actually, going to look at our practice squad, and Troy Reader is on the practice squad. We're going to recall Troy Reader. This is something I do before week one. Troy Reader, 86 speed, 70 block shedding. I mean, we really don't have any good linebackers, so um, we're going to recall him from the practice squad. Uh, Ernest Jones is honestly too slow to see the field. Uh, 82 speed is just... I, I don't really see any worth putting him on the field. His, his physicals besides his speed are actually not that bad. He has 87 pursuit, which uh, maybe we put him at that middle linebacker number two role and see if it costs us or not. But um, I really don't have any interest in playing Ernest Jones, unfortunately. And, uh, yeah, we might have to go into free agency to get another middle linebacker because uh, um, Troy Reader is still pretty bad in his own right. As far as the outside linebackers... We finally found our second blue chip player. Our second and final blue chip player on this team. Remember the Giants? We had we had a couple of them. We had Evan Neal. We had uh, we had Saquon. That was like a, a potentially one. We didn't trade him, which uh, we did end up trading him the last year. But I would say he was also kind of a blue chip guy for us. But we we had two bookend pass rushers: Kayvon Thibodeau, Ajun Lori, Dexter Lawrence was close to blue chip. Um, Adore Jackson survived the whole franchise. So we had guys on that team. Uh, Andrew Thomas as well. Forgot to mention him. He was a stout left tackle for the entire time. This is this is our second and final blue chip player. But as you guys see, 92 speed at that outside linebacker role, he's going to be an edge. 
Um, you know, we're going to run a 3-4, so he's going to go in coverage a little bit, but more often than not, we want him rushing the passer. And uh, 92 speed is a complete raw prospect. He has no moves otherwise, so we're going to have to develop him a little bit. Just let him see the field and let him make mistakes, but also let him use that 92 speed to get after the pass, uh, the quarterback, and hope for the best. And then finally, we go to... Uh, the other side here and we had Nick Hampton we're gonna start Nick Hampton he is a rookie he's kind of like Aziz Ajilori except his strength is like pretty low Ajilori's was not this bad but his build is kind of like Aziz Ajilori so yeah but I don't really see this guy being our, our Aziz Aziz was kind of built different out there this guy he's really lacking a lot at least Ajilori was like a 72 overall star dev this guy's a 67 overall normal dev and once again you see the Rams have a lot of rookies but a lot of their rookies were drafted in the fourth round or later so they're all 68 overall uh, normal dev and it's just, I don't know if these guys can develop enough to justify keeping them. We'll find out after a year, maybe two years with a lot of these guys and, uh, you know, going to free agency or going to draft and find their replacement. They're not balling out in year one. They're going to get playing time. All these rookies are going to get playing time and get a chance to impress. Like Kobe Turner, he's going to start on the defensive line for us. He's only a 68 overall, but he has 87 strength, 73 block shed. That's actually pretty solid. Um... I actually think um, this is a guy that we could develop, Kobe Turner, to just be at least a solid defensive end for us and play inside and muck things up. Uh, he could be our other guy that plays in the interior along with Aaron Donald. We come out in uh, nickel and dime sets and stuff like that. So, you know, maybe, maybe. But like I said, a lot. Of, it's a lot of what-ifs with this team. There's a lot more questions than answers, but um, you guys know we like to take the toughest rebuilds out there. Um, the Cardinals were also a really bad team, but I just like the fact that the Rams don't really have any draft picks to bail them out. Our kicker is Brett Maher, by the way. If uh, it concerns you, we do have Brett Maher. He is actually pretty good in the game. 83 kick accuracy is not that bad. 96 kick uh, power is pretty good, so um, even though he has... A knack for missing kicks and PATs in real life. He's going to be a pretty reliable kicker for us, I feel like. But um, Let's go over the re-sign page so I can show you guys. I've been calling all these guys upcoming free agents, and I'll show you guys now. Like I said, a lot of these scrubs, they're going to hit free agency. Like, I'm going to be honest. I uh, Maher will probably try to re-sign. We'll prob we'll, I would say we'll try to re-sign Kevin Dotson. Um, but, like, Van Jefferson, Tyler Higby, Robinson, Fuller, uh, even Cam Akers. Like, there's no reason to pay a running back that's not a superstar more than five mil a year. All right? That's not just a real-life thing. That is a CFM thing, at least for me. I, I don't see, like, why would we why would we sign Cam Akers? Like, give me one good reason why we would sign Cam Akers. Besides, if we turn Cam Akers into a superstar, that's the only way. We re-sign Cam Akers if we dev him up during the season. And the other guy we will probably re-sign is John Johnson just to have that sub-linebacker on our team. So, yeah, we have three guys we're going to target re-signing. John Johnson, Kevin Dotson, and uh, Maher. And Akers if he turns into a superstar. But that's it. The rest of those guys, they can walk and um, pack their bags and say their goodbyes. So, you guys may have noticed that even though we're letting a lot of people walk, we only have $60 million of cap space going into the year. So, a big reason why, um, I'll just go from here, is Matt Stafford. We got to talk about this Matt Stafford contract because we are absolutely stuck with this man. He is making guaranteed money, a lot of guaranteed money. All right, this is scary. 49 mil, 50 mil, 49.5 in the fourth year of the franchise. So, here is the plan with Matt Stafford. One, we pray that he retires after year one of the franchise. That is best case scenario. He would be entering age 36. Especially if we start Stafford, there's a good chance he doesn't retire. But if he does, that clears $50 million off the books right there. Plan number two is not to use the new restructure contract feature because um, that, that just backloads money into year three and year four and... There's no reason to do that. Even though there is hope for Matt Stafford to retire, there's also a chance Matt Stafford just chooses not to retire and absolutely traps us. So the plan is if Matt Stafford doesn't retire in the first year of the CFM, we cut him. We will actually take like a 5 mil cap loss 
But after that, his money is off the books after the second year of the franchise. So we're going to lose a little bit in um, you know, free, the first free agency before the start of the second season. But after that, Stafford is off the books. So we are going to... Matt Stafford will not be on the team on the second year. Let's just say that. Um, oh, yeah. So the last thing I guess I, I can show you guys is our draft capital. So this is what Madden has as far as our draft picks. I don't really think they registered the Dotson trade as far as, like, the pick swaps that happen because we, we just have all our picks. I, I'm pre, I feel like this shouldn't be right for the uh, post Dotson trade. But as you guys see here, not only do we have a lot of holes in our roster, we don't really have the draft capital. And this is why I like this Rams rebuild over the Cardinals rebuild. The Cardinals are, are going to be a worse year one team. But the Cardinals have such good draft capital, probably the best of any team by far. They have multiple first rounders and stuff like that. Um, the Rams, we have six draft picks in the first year. Six draft picks, including a Denver six round pick. And even after that, we don't really have, you know, as you guys know, the Rams traded away all their picks. They were going win now. They finally stopped doing that, but they also didn't stockpile any picks. They weren't building for the future either. So the Rams are in this weird little conundrum where their best players are all old. As you guys can see here, they're all going to be on the wrong side of 30. My all has to get rid of all of these guys, but there's just so many holes to fill. How many can you fill, and how long is it going to take for us to fill those holes? That is what we have to answer by playing the games, by going through the seasons, by trying to develop players, by trying to make trades, all that good stuff that comes usually with these franchise series. So that's it for our preview of the Los Angeles Rams. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And next time you guys see us with the Rams, it's going to be game day. It's going to be week one against the Seattle Seahawks. We have a couple of divisional games. I guess really quick before we head out, I'll show you guys um, the team schedule that we have dealing. Um, so we go uh, Monday Night Football week three against the Bengals. Uh, scroll a little bit down. We play the AFC North and the uh the AFC North and the NFC East. So we're going to be going against some pretty good teams from those divisions. A lot of good quarterbacks. So uh, we'll see how we can handle all of that. Uh, as you guys see, the, uh, we play the 49ers in the final week of the year. We play the Saints on Thursday night. Those could be some big games down the road. Uh, depending on how these other users do, of course. But um, yes, yeah, I don't really have any expectations for this Rams team. If we don't win, it's not a bad thing in year one to get ourselves a nice draft pick. But if we do and we overachieve, then, I mean, I'm not going to try to lose. I'm, you know, we, we never try to lose with our squad. And usually we do end up making the playoffs in the first year. But if we don't, I'm perfectly okay with that. I mean, we could really use a good draft pick. <laughs> I don't think I could tank to get Caleb Williams. It would, I, I think if I tanked, there were, uh, people would be like, hey, man, you, that dude's losing games on purpose, and they might come from my neck. So I don't think that can happen, but, um, you know, well, let's see, man. Like I said, the only way to uh, find out all this stuff is by playing the game. So leave a like if you guys enjoyed this one. Thank you guys for uh, sticking around, the real ones that stuck around for uh, this whole breakdown. Shout out to you all. Um, subscribe for some more Rams gameplay. We're going to have a lot of Rams, a lot of Rams this year, man. It's Rams house for this year's franchise. I'll catch you guys next time. Thank you, as always, for watching.